Welcome to my new Let's Play of Super Mario Galaxy. This is one of my favorite games of all time, so for its 15th anniversary, I've decided to redo my original Let's Play. This is the Nintendo Switch version from the Super Mario 3D All-Stars Collection. Overall, this is actually a pretty solid way to experience the game, but it definitely has some quirks, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Alright, let's get started. Every hundred years, a comet appears in the skies above the Mushroom Kingdom. The comet was so large one year, it filled the skies and sent countless shooting stars raining down. The toads brought the shooting stars to the castle, where they became a great power star. It should have been a very happy time for the citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. That was the night of the Star Festival held once every hundred years to celebrate the comet. Dear Mario, I'll be waiting for you at the castle on the night of the Star Festival. There's something I'd like to give you. From Peach. <laughs> I'll be honest, this might be my favorite start to any Mario game. I really like the Star Festival. It's a nice little chill area where, where we can kind of experiment with the controls. Mario has a lot of moves from the previous games like 64 or Sunshine. Um, he can long jump, he can side flip, uh, he can triple jump. Um, if I can actually uh, get this to work, like so. Um, back flip and crouch by extension, ground pound, and so on. Um, it's also just really pretty. Like, it's a cool little area to kind of play around with Mario's controls, but it's also just really impressive, especially for a 2007 Wii game. Um, this is the Switch version, so it's obviously been cleaned up a little bit, but even the original game looks really good for the time and for the hardware. Alright, so let's head over to the main square of this little toad town. This might also be one of the most serious openings to a mainline Mario game. Uh, the town is under fire, Toads are being uh, encased in crystals, and of course, Princess Peach is in danger. So, let's make our way over here, dodging all of the meteors uh, being fired at us, and let's try to quickly make our way over to Peach's castle.
Finally, you're awake. Let's play. Come on, jump with B. So, as you can see, I've decided to mix things up for this playthrough. By getting 100% as Mario, you can unlock Luigi as a playable character and go through the game again, minus the intro which is only for Mario. So, since I've already done a full playthrough on my channel as Mario, I thought it'd be fun to go through as Luigi instead. Um, Luigi has the same moveset as Mario, but slightly different properties, uh, which is typical for the character. So his traction is slightly worse, he kind of slides around a bit and has trouble slowing down when you're running. Um, he can also jump slightly higher, so this will be interesting. I'm not used to playing through as Luigi, uh, so yeah, this will be fun. Uh, for now, we are basically stranded on this spherical planet, and we have to follow this bunny and see where he takes us. Let's play hide-and-seek! If you catch all of us, we'll tell you about where you are. Alright, we have to find all three bunnies. Luckily, there's no time limit or anything. We can take our time. Uh, the first one should be right over here in this patch of grass. Uh, finding them isn't that bad, catching them can be a little annoying at times. You caught me! Oh, I knew I should have hidden in the crater. Part of the reason they're easy to find is they actually um, rat out the locations of the others. Uh, so a crater, uh, I don't think... Yeah, this is the wrong crater. This goes straight through the planet. There's one crater that doesn't go through the planet, and that's the one we're looking for. Um, this is kind of like our tutorial of sorts for the gravity mechanics, which are definitely unique to this game compared to other 3D Mario games. Um, so yeah, catching the, the bunnies isn't too bad in theory, but sometimes the gravity can be very disorienting. Um, I'm kind of used to it after playing the game for so many years, uh, but I definitely remember feeling very motion sick when I first played. You caught me! Aw, oh, if only I'd hidden in the pipe. Alright, there are two pipes that both connect to the same place, so if we take either uh, side, it should work. By the way, you can actually hear the bunny, like you hear little uh, noises, so that tells us the bunny's in the pipe. Um, and this should be the last one, so let's catch him and see what happens next. Again, sometimes that's easier said than done. I can't believe I let myself get caught. Wow, you caught all of us? Maybe you really can help, Mama. So, a mysterious structure has appeared, and we can now talk to these little star people. Sorry about bringing you here so suddenly, we should probably tell you where you are. There's a connection here to deep space, far from your lands. We call it the Gateway to the Starry Sky. Mama's waiting up above. Please help her with whatever she asks. I've been watching you from here. This place is called the Gateway to the Starry Sky. My name is Rosalina. I watch over and protect the cosmos. To save your special one, you'll need the power to travel through space. Luma can give you this power. I will entrust you with his care. You have the ability to spin now. Shake the controller. You can also spin with Y. 
Disaster has struck us, just as it has visited you. With Luma, I hope you can rescue the Grand Stars. May the stars shine down on you. Shake the controller or press Y to, to spin into things that look breakable. You can even spin enemies to stun them. I think it goes without saying that's, that uh, shaking the controller is a lot easier if you're using Joy-Cons or the original uh, control setup of a Wii Remote or Nunchuck. Um, on a Pro Controller, it's not the best, so I'm glad they also added it to Y instead. It's a lot more convenient. And you might notice the Luma kind of pops out of like, like pops up briefly. Uh, basically that's like a cooldown, so when the Luma, like, until the Luma shows up, you can't spin again, so keep that in mind. This is a launch star. Shake the controller, or press Y when you're near one, to shoot through space like a comet. Now go and explore the universe. There are lots and lots of galaxies for you to discover. Hi there, good to see you. I have some bad news though. See, I had a launch star all ready for you, but a meteor smashed it up. You can't leave without it, so find all the star chips to fix it. Oh, and be sure not to fall in the black hole. So Mario Galaxy is made up of a bunch of small planets, usually connected by launch stars and other ways to travel. Um, so to actually move on to the next planet, we basically need to actually fix the uh, launch star. We have Goombas. There are actually a couple different types of Goombas, which we'll see a little bit later. We also have a 1-up right away. You earned, on, you earned one additional Luigi. More like 64 and less like Sunshine, you actually don't keep lives if you quit the game. So don't expect high life counts in this playthrough, because I'll probably uh, be saving and quitting a lot for the sake of... Um, backup saves. Uh, so yeah, get used to seeing the life counter at 4. Uh, at, at least I'm pretty sure 0 counts as a life in this, so we essentially have 5 lives, which is not too bad. This game is pretty easy. I am definitely playing this a little bit safe because I'm not entirely used to how uh, slidey Luigi is, and I do not want to uh, fail on the very first level, to be honest. Alright, we have another launch star, so let's see where this takes us. We now have two small plants close together and some Goombas. By the way, we, we can also break the crystals now that we have um, the uh, ability to spin. We can also use spinning to hit this, uh, which actually sends out a shockwave that stuns Goombas. If you run into a Goomba, uh, you can actually kick them if they're like um, knocked over. Uh, which, in that case, give us star bits. I'm pretty sure if we jump on Goombas, uh, they give us coins. Uh, so that's actually kind of a neat little trick there. Uh, that you can either decide whether you want star bits or coins, depending on how you defeat Goombas. Get me out of here! One of those enemies should have the key. You can shake the controller or press Y to spin them around and make them dizzy. Once they're stunned, just run into them! Alright, so we defeated all the Goombas on this planet, but uh, there will be another Goomba here now uh, that'll have the key, so that narrows it down considerably. And now the Luma is free! Thanks! Would you mind rescuing my buddy in that base up there too? I'll transform into a Sling Star. Just jump into me after I... Transform! Sling stars are like launch stars, but like to very close together planetoids. So like a launch star will send you to like a very distant planet, while a sling star will just send you close by, like that. Um, we're on another one. Uh, we're basically on a similar planet, but it's a little bit bigger, and there is another uh, Luma in a cage. Spin enemies and run into them when they're stunned to boot them. 
On one hand, I almost feel like they're over-explaining the spinning at this point, but also it is the one major new technique in this game, so I guess it makes sense. Uh, what do you have to say? If you take damage, grab a coin to boost your life. Oh, that's actually a good point. Uh, this game is actually unique from the previous two games in the series, uh, because you only have uh, three hit points instead of eight. Um, there are ways to get more health, but it is a little bit a little bit scarier in some ways, uh, not having as much health compared to something like um, 64 or Sunshine. Um, Alright, so we have a very large Goomba here. Can we actually attack directly? Uh, we can. We can also use these to create shockwaves again. Maybe a little bit safer than like running straight up to this giant Goomba. Uh, but if we uh, defeat this, we get another key that will save the next Luma. So yeah, coins are basically used to restore life. Star bits are like actually the primary currency though. So in most cases, you'll probably see me kicking Goombas because uh, we need all the star bits we can get, um, like so. All right, so let's talk to the Lumas. Hurry, down here. We've been waiting for you. That's a grand star. We have to save it. They're using the grand star to power that awful machine. It looks like it's making something. We have to do something before the grand star's power is drained. Quick, find a way to stop that terrible machine. So, uh, one thing you'll notice a lot in this game are these little switches on the ground. So if we actually run over them, uh, they'll turn on and off. Uh, it can actually be a little bit annoying, because like then, I accidentally turned it right back on. Um, so blue is off in this case. Turn off the flip switches on the floor to shut down this machine. So yeah, blue is off, yellow is on, so you, let's turn this off. Um, there should be switches along the side. I, I don't think there are any on the ceiling. Yeah, that's the entrance. Uh, so we probably only, only have one or two more switches left. Uh, I'm guessing one more. And with that, we have rescued our first Grand Star. You got a Grand Star. Grand Star Rescue, Gateway Galaxy. High score updated. You increased your star bit count. You've discovered a new galaxy. The beacon is lit again. It shines weakly. Maybe only as bright as a class 6 star, but at least the poor Lumas will survive now. Oh, thank you for saving the Grand Star. These star people are my family. They mean so much to me. <laughs> Welcome to the Comet Observatory. It's my home, and also home to the Lumas. You see, we travel the starry skies. We pass by this area once every 100 years, but we suddenly stopped in front of this planet. 
A strange force had latched onto our ship, pulling away Starbits and our power source, Power Stars. Our ship had lost power, so it entered a deep hibernation state in which it could not move. Those who took your special one picked up the Power Stars and discovered the power to cross the universe. Please, Please I have a request. This observatory uses star power to project images of the galaxies that are scattered across space. And there's a chance we can use our few remaining stars to look for other power stars. These round rooms are called domes. We observe galaxies from domes such as these. But the only one that's working now, powered by the star power you restored, is this one, the Terrace. Please go to the Terrace and try to recover the power stars from the galaxies you can see from there. If we do that, we'll be able to restore the Comet Observatory's ability to fly like a starship. Then perhaps we can pursue the thieves who ran off with, ran off with the power stars. Welcome to the Comet Observatory, our hub area for this adventure. Uh, there's not a whole lot to see yet because there's no power, so a lot of the areas are not um, not accessible for the time being. Uh, we can see one area off in the distance, but for now, our only um, major place we can actually enter is the terrace. Uh, so let's head inside. Welcome. This dome acts as an eye as an eye of an obser of the observatory. From here, we can gaze upon distant galaxies. Once this Luma transforms into a pulse star, he will guide you to those faraway galaxies. Simply point your cursor at the pulse star and press A. If you lose sight of the cursor, you can reset it with R. If you're playing in handheld mode, you can just tap the pulse star directly on the screen. That goes for all uh, pointer-related features of the original Wii version. You either use gyro controls or you use uh, the touchscreen in handheld mode. Um, I kind of wish you could use gyro in handheld. Uh, you can in tabletop mode if you have uh, a non-Switch Lite console and a Switch Lite configuration. You're basically stuck with... Um, touch controls, which is not the best for some levels, uh, but we'll definitely see that a little bit later. Uh, let's actually see what this looks like. These are the galaxies that can be observed uh, from this dome. The numbers represent their distance from the observatory. The bigger the number, the greater the, dis the distance. The more power stars you find, the farther you will be able to travel. Our only stop is the Good Egg Galaxy, which we'll be exploring next time. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Super Mario Galaxy.